Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. We're making a leather holster for a Glock 19. If you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comments below. Looking forward to many more videos. I hope you all enjoy. We're starting out with folded up poster board. I'm leaving an inch at the end of the barrel and three quarters of an inch around the rest of the gun. The poster board is folded in half. The main body of the gun is complete. Now I'm adding a belt loop. I am using sharp curved punches to cut out the pattern. The pattern is all finished. I'm trying it out with the replica gun. The next step is to trace the pattern onto the leather. The pattern looks good. I like to use a sharp awl to trace the pattern onto the leather. Use straight edges as much as possible. I'm using the curved punches to cut out the rounded areas. Be sure to use a fresh knife as well, that'll give you the best chance of getting nice neat edges. The leather pattern is complete, now it's time to test it with the replica gun. It looks good. I'm using an edge beveler now to cut down on the amount of leather on some of the sides. Using an edge beveler will prevent corners from folding in when you start burnishing. These are the holes for the rivets. I predetermined where they would be based on other holsters that I have made. Match up your edges and make sure that the holes are even on both sides. Finish the holes for the rivets that will hold the belt loop in place and we will be ready to begin dyeing. This is a dark brown leather dye. I'm applying it with a disposable sponge I bought at Hobby Lobby. I highly recommend them. Kiwi Saddle Soap for that glossy finish. I don't have a rivet press. I use these punches to install my rivets. Testing things out, making sure that everything fits properly. I set my compass to four millimeters and trace my stitching line. I like using six millimeter punches to make my stitching holes. I also use an awl to make the holes a tiny bit bigger. It just makes the process easier.
you want the same amount of holes on each side. That's what I'm doing right now, counting holes. This is the process that I mentioned earlier to make the holes a little bit bigger with an awl to make the stitching process easier. I applied token awl to my edges to make the burnishing process smoother. Now applying the rivets to the body of the holster. Let the saddle stitching process begin. Using Amazon's best over here, one millimeter wax thread. Now trimming out excess leather around the edge that has been stitched together. Using a file to smoothen out the edges before I use the edge beveler. a little dye for the edges and start burnishing. If you burnish while the dye is still wet, it'll make a nice glossy finish. I soaked the holster in water for a few seconds. Now I'm gonna mold it and then let it dry. I skipped a step, I should have applied my brand while the holster was still open. Not ideal, but I still got it done and it looked good. A little more saddle soap for a nice shiny finish. and the final product. That's pretty much it. You can, uh, so this would be something that I would uh, maybe, yeah use at the at the range uh, or something like that uh, it's pretty sturdy that that one that loop holds it in place pretty pretty well there uh, and it's I think it looks pretty good I would like that brown uh, the water molding makes gives it a nice 
uh, kind of uh, fitted uh, feel. But that is it guys. Again, uh, thank you all for uh, watching um, and I will see you for the next one.